All right. So journaling and back testing is really, really ideal because it helps with a lot of different metrics. So if you are getting late entries, obviously that's not really great. So then you kind of want to back test yourself and journaling is good just in case if you do something wrong, you can always improve on stuff. It's always, you can always improve on stuff, especially with trading. There's always another kind of level to increase on. So if you have say a bad trading day, it's very important that you journal it and don't just say, oh, you know, this day sucks. Let me just close my computer. No, no, no. Take a couple of minutes, you know, journal what's going on. Say what happened, you know, what happened? Did you, why did you take the trade? What happened with it? And then, so what I mean by all this, so here's some things that I look for. Um, journaling, like I said before, is accountability. So what do you want to think about for journaling? I have three different criteria. So the first two are trade attributes and trade outcomes. So kind of just to describe some of them. So for attributes, why did you enter the trade? Did you enter blindly or did you actually have due diligence? So why did you enter? What was the best thing about this trade? So did it work in your favor? Did it not work in your favor? Did you stick to your trading plan? If your trading plan is say you want to cut at 10% and you cut at 40%, clearly you didn't switch, stick to your trading plan. So that's something you have to you know double check on. Did you trail in and scale in and out of the trade? So what that means is, say if you are a winner, right? And it's in your favor. Did you um, pretty much trail out? And what I mean by that is if you have multiple contracts and you cut like three of them, and then you leave the rest in a sense to quote unquote run. So then you would use a trailing stop. So that's one thing. And then vice versa for scaling in and out. You never wanna put your full position size in at one specific time. You wanna you want to basically be trenching in. So like I will usually put a starter size of like one or two contracts either before the move or just to kind of in a sense, um, feel the trade out, you know? And then once I see more confirmations, then that's when I actually put more size onto the table. Um, it's very, very important that you don't just put your full size into the trade. If you put, you know, 20 contracts into your trade and then two minutes later, it just reverses on you. You just lost potentially a decent bit of money. So always scale in and scale out of your trades. Um, it's very, very important. Another attribute is how would you have managed the trade if you took it again? Is if the same setup happened, you know, the same quote unquote A plus setup, would you manage the trade like you did before? Or is there something you could potentially do better next time? So what could you improve on? Because there's always something that you can improve on. And whether, whether it be, you know, entries, exits, management, literally anything, there's always something that you can improve on. And then lastly, for the attributes, how do you rate the trade? Was it a banger? Did it work out in your favor? You know, like a 10, was it not that great? And, you know, you didn't have much due diligence. You didn't really think about anything before you jumped in, you jumped in blindly. You know, that's more like a, like a three trade, right? So you always want to rate your trades because you want to be identifying which trades work best for you. You think you could be more of a uh, bounce trader, but then when you kind of journal yourself, you find out your, your bounce trades are actually the ones you lose the most on. And then if you uh, back test and journal your breakout trades, you realize, okay, I'm actually doing better with my breakout trades. So this is where you should be focusing on more just because you think you're better at bounce trades, but then your actual journaling shows you otherwise. So this way you can have multiple strategies kind of coupled in together and figure out which ones you're better at and which ones you're really not the best at. And if you're not really the best at one specific strategy, you can kind of improve on that and figure out, you know, what you can do better. So for trade outcomes, this is basically after the trade, you can kind of um, do some more research in a sense. What was your profit loss and percentages? Because usually traders only care about percentages. You don't need to care about profit for monetary basis, only care about percentages. What was your profit in terms of risk units? So basically, was it a good risk reward setup? 
Like if you had a one-to-one risk reward setup, that was really not ideal. But if you had something like a two-to-one, you know, three-to-one and greater, that's more ideal. So you want to be having more outcomes. So basically less risk with the most outcome. So always think of probability and risk to reward ratios. If you find yourself constantly taking one-to-one, don't do that. It's it's not very ideal. It's actually pretty crap because you're not really, you know, you're risking $50 to potentially make $50. It's not, you don't want to be doing that. Um, what was your profit and money? So like, obviously I said, percentages matters first, but you still want to know that the actual dollar amount still, uh, how long did you hold the trade? What was the time and price of both your entries and exits? So this way you can also figure out, okay, am I more, tuned to scalping? Am I more tuned to day trading? Am I more tuned to uh, swing trading? So this way you can figure out, you know, how long did you hold it for and the time and the prices of both of your entries and exits. Then the next one that I have, the last one that I think about is trade metrics. So what was the trading setup? So what strategy did you use? Uh, did you use a bounce trade? Did you use a breakout trade? Did you, were you spread trading? Were you swing trading? What, you know, why did you enter this setup and what was your strategy you used, right? Was it a EMA crossover? Was it a breakout from a consolidation? Was it, a, you know, a pattern breakout? Whatever, whatever your strategy is, why did you take it? What was the setup? Once in the trade, did, your, did the actual trade hit your final profit-taking levels or did you get stopped out early? So this is something you want to be aware of as well. So what happened to the trade after your exit to judge whether or not I should have held longer or cut faster. So this way, you know, most people, they, they take their, the trade and kind of just, you know, be done for the day or just close out that specific stock ticker because they took a loss. Don't do that. Look back at it, you know, at the end of the day, see what could have happened if you held longer or if you kind of cut sooner. So this way you can kind of back test to see, okay, you know, if I saw this in the moment, I could have held longer for more profit. If I saw this in the moment, I could have potentially cut sooner and not lost as much. So then you can kind of just double check yourself to see what's, you know, what happened. And then there is what is known as an MFE and the MAE. So the first one is maximum favorable excursion. So this marks the highest price during a long trade and the lowest price during a short trade. This shows you what the highest profit was during a trade. And then the counterpart is the maximum adverse excursion, which marks the lowest price during a long trade and the highest price during a short trade. This helps you identify what the maximum loss was during a trade, AKA also known as a maximum drawdown of the position. So I know this seems like a lot, like all these different metrics and attributes and outcomes, um, but once you actually kind of set up your, your journal in a sense, it really does not take that long to journal, um, maybe like five minutes per stock. So um, yeah, I know it's, it's gonna be kind of weird to get and get into the mindset that you have to be journaling after you know um a trading either a win or a trading loss but once you get into this into this consistency um, mindset it's really not that hard to do after you have your entire journal set up it'll take you a couple minutes and this way i like to journal usually i don't necessarily care about my winners I care more about my losers because this is where I can kind of, you know, learn from. So for my winning trades, I'll mark down, you know, just some, some very, very basic information. Okay. I took this trade, you know, here's my profit potential. Um, this is what I made. And usually I don't necessarily actually do the full journaling process and, or like the back testing process. We're going to talk about the back testing in a couple minutes here, but I, I usually um, journal the full, uh, pretty much my winners on the weekends. So when I'm kind of like, you know, back testing and journaling everything just to see how I did for the trading week, that's when I'll care more about my winners. But usually I will focus much more on my losers that specific day. So like if I took an L today, I'm not going to close my computer and, you know, get all cranky and just leave. 
I'm going to take about five to 10 minutes to realize, okay, what, you know, what did I do wrong? What happened? And this is when I'll actually do the entire metrics. I'll do the attributes, the outcomes, like all this stuff. So this one for my losers, yeah, it sucks. I just took a loss, but I'd rather figure out what I did wrong and kind of learn from it to not, you know, have that same potential mistake happen next time. And even if it does potentially happen next time, I'll know since I already experienced the loss that I'm not going to, you know, cut it 25%. I'll see it earlier and maybe cut it like five or 10%. So this way, you know, I'm not in a sense risking as much as I should have opposed to last time. So it's important. I'm not just saying, you know, don't journal your winners. Obviously you still need to journal your winners because there is stuff you could have done better. Like you could have um, exited a little bit later and potentially secured more profits. You could have trimmed along the way, uh, you know, uh, basically still um, in a sense, secure more profits that way. So there's always better things to do better, like entries and exits for winners. But I care more about my losers because these are the ones that actually can kind of, in a sense, learn from. So before I go into the actual back testing, does anyone have any questions about what I look for for my journaling and like how I actually kind of set my stuff up? You can do this in a plethora of ways. You can have a you know journal notebook, kind of just write all this stuff down. Uh, you can put it into like an Excel sheet. Um, there's also uh, like trading in a sense, what's the word? Uh, like automated trading journal stuff that you can put in. Um, so there's lots of different things that you can kind of do for a journal setup. And just to answer your question, yes, I do journal my feelings. What I mean by that is, <clears throat> so if I'm not feeling very well in a specific morning, like if I'm waking up really, what's the word, like mind foggy, I'll kind of put that in my notes, like right before I get into a trade. If I do get into a trade, I'll just be like, hey, waking up at X amount of time, um, potentially not going to trade today. My mind is very foggy. So these are the days. If my mind is foggy, I'm not going to risk heavy. I will be taking like very small sizes because I know that my mind's not, you know, fully 100% into it. Or I'll just not trade that specific morning and potentially come back during power hour or just completely take the day off. Because this is where a lot of people kind of um, get mistaken. Like you do not have to trade every single day. You don't have to trade five days a week. I've traded two days this entire week and I made my profit targets. Like you don't have to trade every single day. If your mind's not into it, you know, if the volume is not there, if it's choppy setups, like you don't have to force trades because if you force trades, this is when you start losing money. So I'd rather protect my capital when, you know, the setups aren't there. Or if my mind's clearly not into it, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to force a trade in a sense, right? So I would highly recommend trying to not force trades if the trades aren't there and try to potentially take, you know, a four day work week, three day work week. Like you do not have to trade five days in a row. This one, the one that really kind of matters as well that people don't really do as often as they should is back testing. So back testing is pretty much reviewing your trades, potentially reviewing strategies, reviewing the market to see, because obviously history repeats itself, you know, like um, certain stocks do certain things in a month. So like prime example, uh, Caterpillar, every single April, every single May for the last 15 years has done bullish sentiment you know so like if you back test that and kind of understand that before it happens you're able to capitalize on the move so like certain stocks will do certain things per month so like that makes sense about caterpillar because we're coming into summer months you know you know people like to do projects all that stuff so that's why it's usually historically bullish um another one that's really good at the end of the year is kind of like apple and Microsoft, usually they're always bullish towards the end of the year. So like, if you know these type of things, you're able to capitalize it beforehand. So back testing is extremely important, not only to like back test your certain, your certain self, but you can also back test other stocks to see how you can capitalize them on the future. So here's a few elements that I look for when back testing. So if I'm back testing myself, are my entries early enough, right? If I'm not entering 
at the correct time, nothing is worse than entering too late because a lot of time people are like, oh, I missed the move. Let me just get in now. You know, they're all FOMOing and everything like that. So they're entering towards the top after the move has already happened. So in that case, you're entering late and it increases your drawdown and basically reduces any potential profit that you may have. You might have some profit or you're probably just going to lose because it's going to reverse on you. So if you catch yourself doing that type of trading and you see, oh, you know, the move's already happened $2, don't just chase it. Wait for a pullback. The markets always go up, down, up, down. Like they go on breasts, right? So don't, uh, in a sense, chase something that's already happened. Just wait for a pullback, then get into it. So always be aware of your entries. If you're entering too late, that's horrible. So next, if you are stopped out, how much do you, you lose on average? So that's pretty important. If your entries are late, we now get that your stops are going to be pretty painful because, you know, your capital and your psychology. Uh, so like if you just entered, you know, 45 seconds ago and you entered late as shit and then a minute later the stock plunges two dollars you're not going to cut that because you're like oh you know it's going to bounce it's going to bounce and it doesn't bounce right so that's what i mean by this is if even if your entries are in a sense late you can still have horrible stops because you're psychologically trading now and you didn't cut when you're supposed to Vice versa, even if you have great entries, like you had pinpoint accurate entries, you could have horrible stop, you know, horrible exits because of just arrogance, you know, stubbornness and just not taking your profits when you should have. So you have these both have to go hand in hand. You have to have good entries and you have to have good exits. Um, another thing is you need to understand for how much you lose on average. If in the back of your mind, you're like, okay, I want to take, I'm day trading. I want to take, say, 20% stop losses on average per trade, right? And then you backtest yourself and you realize there's multiple instances where you're actually not taking your stop loss when you should. You're actually taking stops at like 40%, you know, 50%. You're just bag holding multiple, multiple times. This is something you have to fix. This is an irregularity to your trading. You're not, in a sense, um, adhering to your trading rules. If your trading rules is I'm going to stop out around 20% and you find yourself, you know, cutting at 40% often, you're just wasting more money just by being stubborn. So this is something you have to fix and, and back testing and journaling shows your accountability. You have to be accountable for yourself or the market is just going to keep bending you over and bending you over. So you have to understand what you're doing wrong and how to fix it. Um, what is the average profit that I make per day, per week, per month? So, before I kind of go into that, a back testing with a high win rate, you know, high everything could still not perform well in live trading. So what this means is you could be paper trading for five months and thinking, oh my goodness, I just made a crap ton of money. This is easy as, you know, super easy. But then when you get into the real world, the real trading world, when emotions come into effect, everything is different. So just because you're back testing um, on paper trading in a sense, does not mean it's going to be completely correlating to actual real world instances, because that is when your fear, you know, your emotional intelligence, your, your emotional intelligence is tested. Um, you're getting greedy, you're getting stubborn, you're getting fearful. So like all these components are kind of, you know, coupling it at once. Whereas for paper trading, you could care less what happens like, Oh, you know, this is just virtual money. You don't really care what's happening. So just keep that in mind when paper trading, it's not in a sense real. It is real because you're getting, you know, you're learning strategies and whatnot, but just because you think you're doing really well with paper trading does not mean you're going to do very well with live trading. A lot of traders that I've known, they, you know, they send me DMs they're like, Hold me, you know, is this, is this it? This is as easy as crap. You know, I've been paper trading for a month. I've, I'm up so much money. And then they message me when they actually jump into the actual, you know, real world setting. And then they lose a couple thousand dollars because they're trying to do the exact same thing they were doing paper trading and not realizing. So I just wanted to kind of give that point that paper trading does not mean real world instances. So to further my point, what is the average profit that I make per trade per week per month? If you have um, and pretty much 
it's important to have written goals and stick to them. If your goal is say, I want to make a hundred dollars per day, then you need to build a system giving you an average of a hundred dollars with the lowest risk possible. Right. So, and then stick to that. You don't have to go above it. You don't have to, you know, over trade. Cause if you make your hundred dollars and say, you know, 30 minutes, why are you still trading? Right. The probability is against you when you put on more and more trades. If you already made your hundred dollars, get on up, congratulate yourself because you just made a hundred dollars in 30 minutes where, you know, average minimum wage workers have to work 16 hours to just make what you just made in 30 minutes. Right. So don't be greedy. Don't over trade just because you hit your profit target that day. Just get on up, do whatever you want to do and potentially come back, you know, towards the end of the day, find something else for a swing or just come back the next day, right? So it's very important that you have goals, whether it be daily goals, weekly goals, or monthly goals, and just stick to them and build a system around it of how you can, you know, in a sense, create that, that monetary return. If I'm thinking I want, um, you know, another example, if I want $500 per day, I'm gonna have to size up for it. You know, I can't be putting one or two contracts on the table to get that $500. I'm gonna to have to be putting five to 10 contracts on the table to actually start making that type of returns. So you have to be realistic with yourself as well. Like if your account size is $500, there's absolutely no way in hell you should be having a 500 day mentality in the back of your mind. Like, no, you should be with that type of account, you should be looking for like 50 bucks at max, right? So you have to be very realistic with your goals and stick to them and just compound them. Because if you can make, you know, $50 a day, even $50 a day consistently, that's an extra thousand dollars you had, you didn't have before, right? So consistency, consistency, consistency is key. Um, so then when you have that consistency factor, okay, you know, I just did this for an entire month straight. Let me move it up. Let me move it up a peg, right? A goal. It's basically like a stepping stone process, right? So my first month, I could be aiming for $50 a month. Show consistency. If you cannot get it consistently, do not size up, right? You're not ready for it. But if you can show consistency, sure, you're ready for it. Go to the, maybe $100 next, right? Do that for a couple of weeks. Consistently, sure, go $125, go $150, whatever it may be. It's basically a stepping stone process because if you can get the consistency down at the basically the bottom tier rungs, then you can show consistency when you're making a couple hundred dollars a day because the, it's the exact same trading strategy, literally the exact same thing. All you have to do is instead of buy one contract, you buy 10, right? And instead of if you buy 10 contracts, you buy 50. If you buy 50, you buy 100. Literally the exact same metrics. Everything is the same. You're just putting on more size, right? So don't rush the process. Trading is a journey, not a sprint. This is probably one of the only professions in the world besides a commission base that you can have absolutely zero salary cap. You can make literal millions of dollars per year trading. You have zero salary cap. So don't rush the process. Do some stepping stones. You'll get there one day, right? So don't worry about that. So, um, that is pretty much my spiel on that. So next, if you are stopped out, how much do you lose? I kind of already talked about this a bit, but it's I'm going to ring on it one more time because you have to be accountable for yourself. If you have in the back of your mind, I want to cut it 10, 20, 30%, and you're constantly, constantly, constantly bag holding your losses, this is horrible. You cannot bag hold your losses. You have to realize, okay, crap, it didn't really work out in my favor. Let me cut this and move on to another trade. Don't just bag hold a loser thinking it's going to come back. Don't play on hopium, right? So another thing is use a hard exit for your stop loss or a mental stop. It could be an indicator. It could be multiple indicators giving an opposite direction signal. So what I mean by that is once you're invalidated, so your structure is no longer either bullish or it's no longer bearish, you are then invalidated, you have to get out or you're basically exiting too late and you're gonna lose more money, right? So it should be based on a candle closing. So basically the candlestick has to completely form for you to enter and exit your trades, right? Not on the candle high, the candle low, because this way you're entering in a sense before it's actually formed, Thus, you have risk of slippage and you're going to be in either 
getting an unfair fill advantage, whether it be entries or exits. So same, same exact mentality for taking profits and entering, right? I usually do not use actual percent percent levels in my mind so like a lot of people do oh you know it's 20 percent. let me just let me just take the loss i usually don't do that i give more myself a, a wiggle room in a sense like i know where i want to generally cut it at whether it be from like 20 to 30 percent but just because it automatically hits 20 percent stop loss does not mean i'm just gonna you know blindly cut out of the trade i have to see did we come underneath a moving average? Did a traditional pivot level, you know, break? Did it break underneath a trend line? Did the pattern pretty much break? Did my Fibonacci, you know, any of these different indications, don't just be solely looking for, oh, you know, I hit 20% stop loss, let me just get on out. But what's not to say if at 22% stop loss, you see a major, major, major bounce potential level, why would you not risk the extra 2%, right? So after now, if it comes down below that massive, you know, say monthly support level, sure, cut it then. But don't just because, oh, you know, it's a 20%, let me just immediately stop that. And then 3% later, it just bounces right on you. And instead of your, you know, 20% loss that you just took, if you wait it potentially a couple of minutes, it basically just reversed on you and you could have either broke even or potentially had some profits. So don't just think, oh, it's down 20%. Let me immediately cut. That's not really a great mentality. Give yourself a wiggle room. Be like, okay, I have a, I have a wiggle room of about 20 to 30% on this trade. Once I am invalidated, whether it be, you know, moving averages, you know, trend lines, Fibonacci levels, any, any of that jazz, then I'm invalidated. Let me cut here. Don't just think, oh, 20%, let me cut. That's not really great to do. Um, and then you pretty much just rinse and repeat this. Creating your strategy is a continuous process. There's never just a one step and you're done. The market changes all the time. Um, prime example is a couple months ago, everyone was in swinging heaven. You know, you could swing for days and weeks at a time and have pretty much no issue. Now the market is suited for more day trading and scalpers because it's a lot of you know fundamental news is coming into the market the market was at all-time highs so you don't really want to put increased size at these levels so this is more suited for day trading and scalping so you have to realize just because something worked out six months ago does not mean it's going to work out right now the market is changing all the time so you have to have multiple strategies in your arsenal for to pretty much adhere to them so like if you know it's super bullish, then sure, you know, put some swings on. Um, if it's super bearish, sure, put some swings on. Like it doesn't necessarily matter what you do. It could be day trading, scalping, spread trading, you know, swing trading. As long as you have different trading strategies for different market environments, that's what important. That's what's very important because a lot of beginners come into the mindset, you know, I have this one specific trading strategy only. This is all I'm going to do, and then they realize why am I losing? Like, why, you know, why are we, why am I losing here constantly? Huh? I don't know, because it's a scalper's market and you keep trying to put on swings, you know, like you have to take a step back and realize it's not going to work for you in this specific market environment. So you have to have multiple strategies in your arsenal to pretty much take from depending on every single market environment, whether it be bullish market environment, bearish market environment, a sideways choppy market environment because you can make money in any one of these environments if you know what trading strategy to actually use and utilize. Um, after you're pretty much done back testing, you always will notice potentially some irregularities, some errors, something that you need to be addressed on. So this is when it's very important to journal yourself in a sense, be like, okay, you know, I, I realized um, after back testing a couple of my trades, I realized I entered way too late. This is something you have to work on. Like if you're entering way too late, why are you doing that? Are you FOMOing? You know, do you have, do you, are you potentially trying to catch a move and just FOMOing? Are you entering too late because someone told you to enter? Are you entering too late just because, you know, X, Y, Z? So you have to realize what are you doing wrong and how can you fix it? Because if you don't like a, uh, hold yourself accountable in a sense, how are you going to fix it? If you're just like, oh, I just took a loss. Let me just, you know, close my computer. How is that going to fix anything? You know, you're not, you're not addressing the issue if you don't actually 
talk about it, if you don't write it down, if you don't like look at it, you're not going to fix anything. You're just going to keep, in a sense, bashing your head against the wall thinking, oh, you know, trading is so hard, trading is so hard. It's hard because you're not taking accountability in yourself. No one's going to hold your hand during this journey. You have to back test, you have to journal, or you're just going to be stuck in the same exact rut you're in, right? It's very important if you want to, in a sense, level up to the next, you know, trading plateau, you have to hold yourself accountable. You can't just be doing the same exact stuff over and over and over again, you know, expecting different results. You have to switch up your strategy. You have to switch up what you're doing. You have to fix what you're doing, you know, like multiple instances here. Um, so it could be super simple too. You could just be, you know, entering too late. Okay, that's an easy fix. Let me just hone that back a little bit. I'll fix that. What if you're exiting too late? Okay, that's a pretty simple fix. Let me just fix that. What if it's just a really simple fix? You're sizing too big for your account size. If you're on a $500 account, you know, and you're, you're using $500 allocation per trade, that's a pretty simple fix. Don't do that. You know, put on $100 per trade. Okay, that's a simple fix, right? So you have to go back to the drawing board and repeat the entire back testing process, the entire journaling process to actually build your perfect strategy because once you get used to doing this type of stuff, it becomes easier and easier. Um, and it kind of gets, you're able to get more consistent with it because sometimes people, you know, never back test, never journal, whereas other people, they will do it every single day. You're trying to get to the mindset of doing it every single day, right? So um, you have to put the work in and stay focused if you truly, truly want to become financially free and have this as a source of income. Any questions about what I've talked about, whether it be journaling, how to journal, what I look for for journaling, um, how to backtest, what I look for for backtesting, pretty much anything we talked about over the last 30 minutes. Do, 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 do you always wait until the end of the day or while you're trading? I feel like if I waited, always waited to the end of the day, I'd forget shit, but at the same time, I feel like if I try to journal while I was trading, it's too much at once. That's a great question. So usually it, it, it depends because if I'm in a trade, like if I'm in multiple trades, then yeah, you're, you're totally right. It is a little bit frantic to basically, you know, journal while you're in multiple trades. But what you could do is basically like put, you know, pen and paper right by you and just be like, okay, you know, X, Y, Z trade, I took a loss on, uh, I cut it at, you know, 11 o'clock or something, just put it in your piece of paper. And then after the end of the day, that's when you kind of want to double check yourself. Be like, okay, you know, why, what happened here? You know, what, what, what's, what's going on here? So just to kind of further your question and your answer, I, if I am done for the trading day, so like if I took a loss, usually for me, if I take two losses in a row, I'm pretty much, I, I, I find myself revenge trading after the fact, right? So after two losses, I'm just going to be like, okay, I'm done for the day. Even if it's like 11, you know, 11 a.m., I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to journal really quickly for like 10, 20 minutes, figure out what I did wrong. And then pretty much just get on up for the day because this way if i find myself when i take multiple losses at once um my mind is cloudy i'm revenge trading you know i'm just trying to make that, that loss i'm making back i'm ego trading um it's not really i'd rather just take a small loss you know like two losses in a row than potentially take a large third loss just because you know i'm revenge trading at this rate um now if you're only in like one trade at once Actually, hold on. Let me let me back pedal it. So you say you'll forget stuff. So that's that's another thing why you should probably keep a pen and paper by your side. So like if you cut one trade, you're in like two trades. You can be like, okay, I cut Apple at 11 a.m. Um, and I cut it at this this time period, and usually they're a win or a loss, right? And then that way you can kind of figure out when you do actually journal it back you know, when you back test and journal a little bit later, when you're fully done the trading day, then you'll know exactly where you cut it at and exactly where you entered that. Cause you're going to put right in your piece of paper. Okay. I entered this trade. I exited at this trade right at these time periods. Right. And then you can either be, you can even do one step forward. Cause if it's not like super busy with your trading at the current moment, you could be like, Hey, I, I was, um, I was bag holding this. I, I could be like just one word things just to kind of, you know, refresh your memory. Hey, I was bag holding this. That's why I took a loss. Um, I was emotional. Okay. That's why I took a loss. Uh, this worked out well. 
you know, and then you can just put a W type of thing and then A plus setup, something like that, you know, just kind of refresh your memory. And then when you're fully done the actual trading day, you would kind of back test and journal in a sense, all the stuff you did. So if you took four trades that specific day, and let's just say two of the ones are losers and two of the ones are winners. So the two of the ones that are losers are the ones that you kind of want to be uh, spending more time on, you know, like the way I said before, like you want to spend more time on like all the different, all the different stuff, right? So this way your losers, you can actually, in a sense, learn from, and obviously you still want to, you know, journal your winners, but you don't really have to take as much time with them. Just be like, Hey, what, on a, on a scale of one to 10, how was this trade, right? If this trade was above a seven or an eight or a nine, then that's okay. Now, if it's a, you know, if it's a 10 trade or a nine trade, this is something you want to be looking for all the time. Then these are the trades that you want to be taking. You want to be taking the A plus trade. You don't want to be even entertaining, you know, an A minus trade or a B setup or a C setup. Those C setups are like one to one ratios. You don't want to be trading those. You want to be specifically watching and looking for the A plus setups and kind of journaling. Okay, I just took you know a massive percentage win. Uh, this trade was an A plus setup, and I'm going to rate this a you know a nine or a ten. Understand that, kind of keep in the back of your mind. These are the tra- these are the setups that you want to look for. So the next time, when you see the identical setup happening, because obviously market repeats themselves, you know the stuff, same stuff happens over and over and over. So this way, the next time you see that setup, you're already going to know this is an A plus setup. I'm going to take it if all the conditions are correct, right? Now, vice versa for a loss. So like, say you know you just had a horrible trade. And the setup was like a C setup, you know, it was, it was crappy risk to reward ratios. You had no like real convictions on why you're getting in. You would rate that like a four, right? Like a three, four, five. So anything underneath a five, clearly not a good trade, right? It's not a good setup. It's not a good trade. So focus on what you did wrong in that trade. If you didn't have any, you know, confirmations, if you entered late, if you entered uh, early, you know, why exactly was it bad? And then focus on what you did wrong and why it was a bad trade. And those are the setups and those are the things you don't want to be doing. So like if it's a no confirmation trade, why would you be taking that next time? You see the same thing, you know, um, forming next time, you know, maybe tomorrow, you already know in the back of your mind, okay, last time I took this specific setup, it was trash, right? So have multiple convictions when you are actually trading. If you have... The way I like to think about it is if I don't have three check marks, like it could be anything, volume, patterns, uh, trend lines, you know, uh, indicators, price act, like literally anything. If I don't have three check marks on why I'm getting into this trade, this is not an A plus setup and I don't want it. Like, so if you're only, if you're like trying to figure out why to get into this trade, you only can find one or two check marks, you already know that's not a good trade, right? You need to have multiple convictions and multiple confirmations on why you're entering XYZ trade. If you can't find them, then you already answered your question. That's not a good trade. You have to have multiple confirmations or you have no reason to put size on and even pretty much enter this trade at all. If you want me to back test something for you, you know, you you can't figure out what you did wrong. Send me the trade over, you know, send me the entries, exits, and we can kind of talk about ourselves, right? We can try to break it down for you to kind of get you into this mindset of how to journal and you know, be consistent with journaling because yeah, it is a little weird to like, after taking a loss to not just get up and be cranky about it or whatever, just sit down, you know, write about it for a couple of minutes while it's fresh, you know, write about it and then just get on up, do your business, do whatever else. But don't just, if you take a loss or you take a win, don't just immediately get out of your, you know, your computer and just be like, oh, let me just, you know, be done for the day. Like at least talk about it for a little bit in your journal, right? Um, It's very important to keep a journal and it's very important to backtest your trades. Um, I appreciate everyone for listening. I hope you learned some stuff and I'll see you guys later. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.